I think all religions are like that, by the way. They're all a little diluted or a little misunderstood or has been changed for power or for, you know, control or, or things like that. I actually, I actually agree with you. And I think if I may add a little bit to fear-based religions are the ones that are the pro I can say the problem, but they're the ones that have some issues that they have to deal with because if it's all fear-based, that's not yeah. God. That's not spirituality. That is not connection with the divine. There is no fear in the, in that. And they don't judge in, you know, divine yeah. does not judge. God does not judge Jesus for God's sakes. You know, while he was here, you know, he was the first one to like, no, bring the hooker in. Like, I mean, come on. It's like, <laughs> it's supposed to throw, <laughs> throw stones at her, you know, all this kind of stuff. Uh, so that fear-based is the real key term because there are wonderful aspects. You're absolutely right. Like I said, originally when we were talking, you know, the positive parts of Mormonism was just like, there's a strong ass community. I've, I've never seen yeah. like wherever you are in the world, they don't even know you from a hole in the wall. I need mm -hmm. five guys. Here you are. Let's do it. Like they don't even question it. So there yeah. is positivity to that, but okay. There is, so that, yeah, there's both. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Now you discussed a little bit about a soul plan, uh, a soul agreement. What is Emberly's you know, take on that? And what is your take on that based on what you've learned? Yeah. Like I said, the psychic medium, that was the first time I'd heard of a soul contract. I was like, what, what do you mean? Like, <laughs> what is that? And I had heard of your soul's plan from Robert Swartz. I don't know if you've heard of him, but he oh, wrote a book. Yeah, called your soul's show. Plan. Oh, yeah. of course. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and that, that book really changed my life in that it introduced that idea to me of like, oh, we, we can plan things before we come here. And when I dug into it with Emberly in the book, what really fascinated me was that, you know, before I always believed that God was the one doling out all the circumstances and the challenges that we'd go through in life. And in my book, I'm like, that's not fair. Like, why is it, why is it that God would like make me lose a child? And I wanted one for so long and I tried so hard and had so many obstacles to get it. And then this other person over here who doesn't want a child, who's abusing them and right. gets like all these kids, or why is it that some people get massive disease and cancer and all these things, and other people are healthy, or the poverty and slavery, like there's so many things that seem so unfair. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and when you think of it from like, God being a higher, powerful, white, cisgender, older, fatherly figure in the sky, like doling out Oh, well, you get cancer, you get rich, you get like, like, the, the, like the like the horrible Oprah and you get cancer and you get, <laughs> and you get like that's like, no, yeah. that's not that's not what it is. Right. But when Emberly explained it, like, no, you actually choose those things based on what you want to learn in this lifetime and what you want to expand and grow about. And I loved the idea of we even choose villains or people to play the role of a villain or somebody that hurts us so that we can learn on a soul level. And she, she really helped me see that sometimes our villains in our human world were probably some of our best friends on a soul level because they were the ones that volunteered to play the evil, <laughs> the evil role. And that just changed my entire way of seeing everyone. Instead of seeing them as like bad or wrong, like victims and villains were some were two things that I had a really hard time like loving. <laughs> I had played the role of victim many times and I really didn't want to be the victim to her death or like, the, you know, oh, poor mom, she lost a child because like, everyone looks at you differently mm -hmm, once you mm -hmm. lose a child. <laughs> right. And I didn't want to play that role. But she taught me that all roles are so beautiful and so valid and so necessary to the way that um, just we expand and grow at a soul level. So she really helped me see that these plans that we created with the vic with the villains and the hero story, you know, you have the background in film, like mm -hmm. every good story requires ups and downs and the really hard conflicts and villains or or even experiences challenges, sure. you know to overcome and without those like it would really be kind of it's boring a, 
It's a boring story. <laughs> a it's story a without story. obstacles or out without conflict is a very boring story. If you look at any movie, any book, any story, even books in the Bible, stories in the Bible or in, in ancient texts, yeah. all of them have conflict. Without conflict, there is, you know, what are the 300 Spartans without the Persian army? It's mm-hmm. just 300 dudes sitting in a mountain. Like it's not really <laughs> exciting. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like you know yeah they're ripped up and yeah, i know they're muscular but still at a certain point it gets boring to watch the full video click on the link below and don't forget to subscribe